literally. you're actually able to hear the blade cutting the hair. Mm -hmm. Some are better than others at that point. Yeah. Like I said, some sing better than others. But that is true in a lot of ways. Okay, I finished my reduction passes. I'm going to rinse off my face again real quick and see where I need to finish up that. And that's just basically I'm feeling around. A lot of this stuff is already reduced to the point where it's pretty darn smooth already. Cheeks mostly. I can tell I have a spot right there. So I will like that. Spot right there. Spot right there, which are my usual spots anyway. Now come the point where you can be a little more aggressive and use some different techniques to get those little bits and pieces up. Uh, this area right here is particularly good for a technique called J-hooking. And the first time J-hooking was showed to me, it was six months before I had the nerve to actually try it. Uh, but in, in retrospect, I shouldn't have been uh, so scared because it's actually not bad at all. You just have to remember to be very, very light. Again, no pressure on any of this stuff. In fact, let me just mention here, as long as I'm talking about pressure and razors, uh, Again, let the weight of the razor uh, do the job as you're, as you're working here. Hold the razor either like a dart or like a spoon, depending what area you're trying to shave. Those are the areas that are most comfortable, most natural for your hand to deal with. And you'll find that if it's a short razor, kind of like this, and you may be a little slippery to your, to your skin, you can hold the bottom of it with your uh, either the middle or, or four fingers and steady it, and you'll have a lot more success. But a J-hook goes something like this. It arcs around. You can, what? That's, just, that's, just, that's crazy. <laughs> you'll kill yourself. <laughs> you'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> you'll shave your eye out. <laughs> The other thing uh, that's very common as an advanced technique is a technique called blade buffing, which is kind of like you might think buffing your shoe. Very, very light, but very quick, short passes in a particular spot where you find uh, your, your hair just not quite smoothed out yet. with cold water 
uh, as the final step. So let me do that. Do you let the witch hazel dry or not? Like evaporate in the face before? No, I don't. Okay. Some people do and use witch hazel as sort of a, a poor man's aftershave. Uh, but I use it strictly as a cleaning agent. Do you need witch hazel? So you put it on, but you won't let the witch hazel dry. And right. Do the I wipe it. I rinse it right off. Okay. But after that, then, I'll go ahead and rinse with cold water to start closing the pores, at least temporarily. And then I'll apply a non-alcohol-based aftershave on, with a wet hand onto a wet face. Which one are you using? This was actually Nivea off of, out of the drugstore. One month with it, with the Nivea for men uh, sensitive is actually an excellent uh, aftershave. And smooth this on because on a wet face you get a smoother, more consistent coverage and you won't use as much product either. And I'm done. Did you cut yourself? <laughs> feel a couple minor little rough spots, but I, I say that only because if you do notice something like that when you're, when you're doing that, don't necessarily mean it's leftover stubble. It could just mean you have a, uh, a, a patch of skin that's uh, a little older, like in an old guy like me, and as the day goes on and, and your skin tightens up, it's actually fine. It's sort of a temporary uh, loosening of the skin and you've got a patch of loose, loose skin that feels like it's uh, stubble and you're going and going and going and going like this and you never can get it, eh, just let it dry off, see what happens. Is it okay to uh, rinse your razor in like 70% rubbing alcohol afterwards? Or is that Absolutely. Okay? No, you can do that. Uh, if you're using a cartridge razor, 70% alcohol will probably destroy the loop strip pretty quickly, but then again, if you've got a decent lather going, you're not going to use the loop strip anyway. But there is absolutely nothing wrong with uh, with an alcohol rinse uh, to uh, to sanitize it if necessary, particularly if you're having skin problems like acne. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that at all. And uh, if you uh, just lost my, my train of thought. Um, <laughs> There's right always some like shade soap uh, residue like, built up. Are right, right on time for the last giveaway? Oh, okay, right on time for the last giveaway. So, so in other words, uh, <laughs> work. Well done. You would so we're gonna, we've got a little bit over, but I mean, we have time for some Q and A if you guys want it. And I want to give away this gigantic Weber grill. Uh, also, don't forget to show how to build a lab. That's right. So yeah, after we give this away, you guys can stick around and keep asking yeah. questions and mixing and mingling. And, yeah, all right. Let's go. Yeah, we'll be excited. All right, Jess. What? <laughs> Fisher Hotel for putting up Mark and his wife tonight, which should be a pretty cool experience. Sharpologist.com, I'm Milwaukee.com, Pass Blue Ribbon, and of course, Stank for hosting this awesome event. <laughs>
I like this stuff. Violence. Violence. Do you have an ear hair and nose hair tool of choice? Uh, my wife. <laughs> no, seriously, my, my actually my uh, my uh, uh, my barber does take care of it. Eyebrows, ear hairs, yeah, she'll take care of that. How many times do you use the blade? How many times? Six. Oh, it depends. You mean for shaving? Uh, it depends on the brand of blade. Uh, I generally shoot for a week. If I can get a week, I'm doing good. Yes. What is your ultimate setup? If you could have anything in the world. What, what do you use? Oh, let me let me think about that. Yeah, I'm taking a load off. Um, my favorite razor, which you will have to pry from my dead cold fingers, is a Mercure Progress adjustable razor. Uh, a lot of people don't care for them. I, I love mine. Uh, I've tried a lot of different razors out there. I've got, in fact, I need to do a, a video of my shave den, as it's called, to show what all I have. But I absolutely keep on returning to it. Um, for, a, for a brush, for pure, unadulterated luxury, uh, I use a Shave Mac variable loft brush, which is actually no longer being made. But it was, it's an adjustable brush where you can uh, set the height of the hair to different levels. Uh, quite frankly, my, my typical run-of-the-mill shave brush I do use on a lot of days is a, is a cheap $40 hair brush from msplace.com. Uh, and that's uh, uh, that's a brush from uh, Crabtree and Evelyn I use a lot too. I do have a very luxurious uh, Rooney that I like, but the uh, handle is a little too big for me, but I still enjoy it. And I just got, really, a, seriously, last week, a Simpsons, my very first Simpsons brush uh, called a Rover. It's a limited edition. It's fairly small, but dense as all get up. And it just lathers up like mad. It's real nice. Um, blades, probably the, uh, an iridium is good. Uh, I, I personally like the uh, derbies and the um, Israeli personas in the blue packs uh, a lot as well. Uh, I do use a feather on occasion, but uh, it just has a habit of uh, biting me when I try. Uh, creams and soaps kind of depends on my mood. Um, some of my favorites are D.R. Harris uh, Arlington Soap. Uh, I really love the, the Trumpers Violet Cream, great stuff. Um, Spike Cream out of Germany, which is very inexpensive and just lathers like a mother, even if you've got uh, hard water. Wonderful stuff, spicy, kind of a peppery, spicy smell to it that just wakes you up in the morning. It's great. Um, price no object kind of thing. Uh, Castle Forbes Limes is like getting hit in the face with a key lime pie, but it's, obs it's obscenely expensive. Um, what else do I like? Uh, I've got so many different <coughs> creams and soaps. Aftershaves. Um, Your face food. What's the face skin food. Trumpers uh, uh, skin food. I use quite a bit. Is that coral? Is that the coral? I use coral and limes. Uh -huh. Coral is an acquired taste. Uh -huh. Uh, that smell is like, it's not roses, and it's not coral, and it's, I don't know what it is. But they also have a limes, which is basically identical in ingredients except for a scent, and the limes is very nice. I also use, believe it or not, King of Shaves aftershave balm, antibacterial aftershave balm. I don't really care for the smell, but it, it leaves my, leaves a nice finish on my, on my face. And uh, for the winter, when it gets really cold and dry, Flores Santal, is excellent, and uh, a, a artisan aftershave from Ashante, the place that you get method shaving stuff from, they have a skin conditioner for aftershave that is just completely phenomenal. Very expensive, but in the winter, it just can't be beat for keeping your skin hydrated. Is there any catch-all website that's got a lot of things like this? To product? Buy? <laughs> Uh, like there are like Amazon for shaving. A actually, Amazon carries a lot of that oh, stuff. Okay. Uh, gosh, uh, pardon me. West Coast Shaving, Lee's Razors, ShaveNation.com, uh, shave TraditionalShaving.com uh, out of Ireland. Uh, yeah, but that's out of Ireland, so there's there's shipping problems sometimes. 
Um, Ms. Place also, she's changing the name of her site to shaveplace.com, has some excellent prices. QED USA has excellent prices. Um, Italianshaver.com gets recommended. It's okay. On, 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 Pardon me? Superiorshave.com will send you a sampler pack of razor blades. But so will a lot of others. Lee's and uh, West Coast Shaving and those guys will do it too. Um, I don't think I have the links on there right now, but I, I can put something on Charpologist for, actually, to be honest with you, uh, in the next week or so, or right after, no, it's me, right after Thanksgiving, I'm planning on a uh, Shaver's gift-giving guide for Christmas, and I'm trying to get uh, what everybody's going to be doing for specials and discounts and things like that for Christmas, and I'll, I'll publish that on Sharpology. Um, yes? Uh, just along the same lines of publishing your recommendations, uh, would you be so kind as to put your recommendations up on I've thought about that, frankly, but it, it really doesn't do any good because what I like, you may, you may find is terrible. The, the object is to, to try a variety of different things, settle on stuff you like, and use that. I mean, I love brand X, but nine times out of ten, somebody else is going to say, Ew, brand X, that stuff's terrible. It, it, a lot of it's personal preference when it comes down to stuff like that. They perform a lot of the stuff particularly from the artisans, perform very well. It comes down to basically what kind of smells you like, what kind of experience you want out of it for creams and soaps. And for blades, it's a matter of what works best with your particular skin and razor conditions. How long does it take you to shave the Ten minutes. Flat. I mean, beginning walking in yeah. to clean, having everything cleaned up and walking out. Ten minutes. And it's a ten minutes I enjoy. What do you think of the response that you've gotten on YouTube? Did you think tens of thousands of people were going to be watching your videos? I've got 4.5 million view views now. <laughs> uh, I've got 10, over 10,000 subscribers. And I get roughly 2,000 views per day of all, the, all my videos combined. And I am still amazed. And to this day. Uh, I, I don't take any of it for granted. I, I, I will occasionally check my statistics and my metrics and I go, how? Why, why is this happening? This is about shaving. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, with a straight, straight razor. <laughs> I have heard of people trying to do J-hooks with a, with a straight razor. You're all dead. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, straight razors are just a whole different ball game when it comes to the, the actual shaving technique. Uh, there are just too many variables that, that don't apply to a DE razor or even a cartridge when you're using a straight razor. I think uh, uh, you go? I think Jess will, will bear bear me out on that. Um, yeah, there you are. I mean, a, a straight razor is just a, a, a whole new, different way of doing things. Yeah. yeah. So, what, so for the follow up is then, what are you doing that? Uh, I've had that question many times. I'm actually planning on it on the next in the next probably couple of months doing a straight razor. Uh, video, but quite frankly, and I'm going to say it in the video, I am not going to be your best resource for straight razors. Uh, Shavenation.com, Geo, who is also on YouTube, does, has a lot of straight razor uh, information. Uh, Lynn Abrams, straightrazorplace.com, which is a forum. Uh, straight Razor Designs, which is his, his web store. Uh, I make no bones about, they know so much more about straight razor shaving than I ever will. They, they have it down pat. They have uh, the products, the techniques, they have the experience to guide uh, the new person in it. And I would seriously, seriously suggest particularly checking out straightrazorplace.com because it's a big forum of straight razor users and they are ready, willing, and able to help the newbie anytime. 
Any other questions? Yeah, I got what, what can you uh, recommend for someone who is extremely sensitive to the whole process? Two things. Um, one is, what have you used so far? Throwaways. Okay, and what kind of and throwaway razors and what kind of uh, what gel, pressurized gels, like you mentioned? It seems like when you nine times out of ten, I'll, I'll, I'll I can say with authority because this is what people tell me all the time. Nine times out of ten, somebody who thinks they have sensitive skin really has average skin. They just use lousy products, and they're getting razor burn cuts, nicks. Uh, if you've got sensitive skin. Stop using a throwaway, like a, like, like a BIC you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Go to a Sensor XL, go to the Mach 3, and a uh, shaving cream or gel that comes out of a squeeze tube. Just those two in itself will probably in increase the uh, care of your shave significantly. Uh, using traditional products, like particularly with uh, Shave, uh, shave soap or cream with a, with a brush will probably help even more. Um, I would say stay away, continue to stay away from like the five blade fusions and things like that. Right, right. And if all else fails, both Art of Shaving and Taylor's of Old Bond Street both have hypoallergenic creams you can use if you really honestly do have sensitive skin. Sure. But like I said, nine times out of ten, it's not sensitive skin. They're just having a reaction to the lousy, lousy products. We gotta get this guy to the fister. He still has to build a ladder. Oh, that's right. I gotta build a ladder and a bowl. That's right. Sure. Let me do that real quick. Grand finale. Straight razor place dot com. Uh, that was the S T R A I G H T Razor R A G E O O R Place dot com. Razor spelled the usual way. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the sharpening. Oh, uh, straight razor design for the sharpening service. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've wetted my brush. And to kind of show the process a little easier, I'm going to use a little bit of this violet cream because it's a different color. And as first you'll see, you only need about a centimeter. You don't need much at all to start out with this. And you want to start out with, with a bowl of just a tiny, tiny, tiny few drops of water in it. And of course your brush. The brush is wet. Yes. No, don't squeeze it. I just shake a little of it out. It's all, you can already start. You can already start smelling it, right? And the, this is going to hydrate the lather. This is almost there, actually. 
pumping it? I'll pu I pump it occasionally. I'll, I'll vary, I vary it around just to... I've actually, I'm surprised because I would usually have to add more water at this point, but it looks like this one's coming, coming together just perfectly. That's your, you're that good. Yeah. Famous last words. You have a well hydrated brush. Yeah. Well, that actually could be part of it because I used this brush before. It's been wet for an hour. Yeah. Now you can see. Super that, leather. No, you can see, notice, notice the hole in the middle of the brush. This means it's not quite ready yet. You, that hole needs to start closing up. So even though the, the lather may look pretty good in the bowl, it's not quite ready mixed for mixing in the brush. So you're gonna mix it a little more. Holes are smaller. Normally at this point, I would probably add just a few drops, literally just a few drops of water finish up that hydration and you can actually see in the bottom of the bowl it's building building up even higher now Oops. scoop up some of the stuff around now you can see in the bowl you see how these these little peaks have formed like like a batter that's what you're looking for soft peak where it kind of comes over. If it's a stiff peak, stays up, you've, you, do, you need a little more water. It needs to be a little bit looser. What if you get too much water? And you can start over again. Add more soap. It's a cream. You can, you can try, but it's hard, it's hard to get it right. Okay, right there. You've got a nice soft peak. Everything's covered. It looks probably maybe to some people a little uh, wet, a little too wet, but believe me, this will give you a really good lather on your face. And again, what we're talking about, 90 seconds? Two minutes maybe? At the most? Done. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. How many shades do you got at one